our footage, uh, HDR footage, let's have a look now at uh, editing it. There's quite a few steps involved. So let's have a look at that now. OK, we'll have a look in this video at editing our HDR time-lapse uh, footage we shot the other day. So I've got some footage I shot there on the cliff in Cork. And you can see there, these are actually raw files, but it doesn't matter if they're raw, raw JPEGs. And there was three, three shots in these sequence. So the first thing to do is to actually get these kind of merged into one shot each in a kind of a batch process. So they're all done because there will be several hundred of these shots going down, as you see. So to do that, you, your best bet is to use some software to do it. And uh, most of the software you actually do have to buy, unfortunately. But you can trial it uh, for free and you can have a look at it. What I'm going to use, which I think is very, very good, is SNS HDR Pro. It's about £80, I think. Uh, another competitor is Photomatics. But personally, I think uh, SNS HDR Pro is a little bit better. So I'll start that up now and we'll see how to edit these time lapse photos. So, once you open the screen, is the first uh, option is to actually open up here, a file and open here in the top left. And I'm just going to choose on my desktop where my shots are. And these are the shots. Now, there's a, a normal shot, there's an underexposed shot and an overexposed, you might remember from the shot we did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select the first three of these. So I've got one of each and open those. And then you get this screen here. There's size. I don't want to reduce the size. I don't need to align the images because the images are actually on the tripod. They don't need to be realigned. I'm going to leave deghosting and noise reduction on. And you can actually do noise reduction in RAW here. Um, I will put a little bit on. You can, it goes up to nine you can see there but as I can do noise, noise reduction later on if I want to and these shots there wasn't any much problems with them I'm going to just leave that on at two and then it'll start to from those three images it'll actually take all the details regarding the shadows and the brights etc all the other mid-tones as well and create a merged image so it just takes a few seconds what the program's done here is it's merged the those three images into one so it's a good start and you can see right on the left here it's got it's loaded it as what's called default that's the default setting so if you ever want to go back to it you can just click on that there there are lots of other settings it gives you as well you can have a look at uh, natural look neutral light soft dramatic let's click on that there that's another one and some of the presets I did as well for some of the shots as well you can see there as well so you can set your own these are presets you can actually save as you do some of the work so at the moment it's in uh, dramatic now there are two main ways you can go about doing all of this the first thing you can do you can pretty well leave it as similar to something like this which is kind of a flat image it's not too sharp it's still got all the information in it it hasn't had much work done to it and um, it's kind of a neutral image see there this is a neutral one as well you can see if I click on the uh, neutral image there and I come down on the left here as you go through the different images you see there, or the different presets, these sliders move on the right. So you can set these. Now for the for the neutral, or the default one you get, what that gives you is kind of a flat image, which actually, for, so one train of thought would be, you can use this, convert all your files into this image, and then what you'll do is then you can work on coloration and sharpening, etc. in your editor, whether it's After Effects, Premiere Pro, or whatever, even Photoshop. But I mean, I'm going to show you how you can use this to actually uh, make quite a nice looking image as well. So let's start with working on this a little bit. So uh, on these sliders at the left here, you can obviously do things like increase and decrease brightness. I'm not going to do an awful lot to this because it's not bad as it is. So um, I'm going to, uh, I think it's best to go somewhere in between, not extreme flat, but not really uh, extreme HDR image at this because you can do a little bit of editing later on in your editor. So things that I probably would want to do, so you can see their highlights. Well, it's not too bad, the highlights as they are. You can always you can bring them down a little bit to uh, darken them a little bit. So I might just do that because it was quite a bro well to around about there. Say um, shadows, you can bring up shadows if you want. I'm going to bring the shadows up just so you can see the the mouth of the cave there a little bit better. Now these contrast details they kind of uh, boost a kind of appearance of sharpening. I'm going to I'm going to leave them uh, pretty low. I don't really need to do much to those on on this particular one. Uh, neither with that and contrast you can obviously increase contrast here as well I'm going to leave that pretty well as it was 
not a lot to, to do on this particular one. Uh, black is down at zero. Well, I might want to I want to increase the blacks a little bit just to make it a bit more slightly more dramatic. Sharpening, and you can add sharpening here. I'm probably going to leave that. I'll add a little bit, but I'm probably going to leave that to my editing program. But you can sharpen there as well. And then the colours and stuff. Well, I shot it fairly accurately. I didn't have any major problems there with the coloration and stuff. So you can do things like coloration here. Of you can increase saturation if you want, make it a bit more like that. You can go to extremes. But actually, most of the settings uh, for here now, this this shot is not too bad as it stands. Um, you can actually put in a bit of. Uh, contrast there if you want as well just using the curve now some of the presets I've done here so for example uh, that one or I brightened up with this one here made it slightly more dramatic did things like I did move up some of the contrast details etc so the best way of using this really is just to play around with it you can then the next stage you have to do is export it in a batch process you've done it only done it on three images so far so you've got to apply that look to all of your images and all these programs that you're going to use have to do this batch process to uh, convert all of the images. So first of all, get, where are my images? Well, I'm going to, just going to get where the original files were. Shot 2. So that's where the source files were. The format was uh, raw, but the nice thing about this program is you can use anything. JPEGs, TIFFs, HDR, SNS. So if you, if you shot in JPEG, you can use them as well. It's pretty well the same screen you get as well. So these happen to be raw, these ones. And I had three exposures. I don't, want to, I don't want to reduce the size, I don't want the alignment. Deghosting I'm going to leave on and don't want that. And noise reduction anymore, I've said three there, that's fine. And where I'm going to put them, you have to put them in another folder. So I'm going to choose a folder here. I call this new edit. That's going to be the folder they're going to go into when they're changed. Oh, the originals are always kept, so this is just going to put in the merged versions. Now here is important as well, the image format. So the best quality is a TIFF 16, which is a very high quality 16-bit. Now that you can import into Adobe After Effects, Photoshop and a lot of other programs from that. You'll have a slight problem with Premiere Pro though, it doesn't import 16-bit TIFFs. You can do 8-bit or you can do JPEGs if you want to go straight into Premiere Pro. The top quality, I'm going to leave it as that, 16-bit TIFF. And I'm not going to bother to convert to S. RGB, I'm not going to shut the computer down, and then you just click on start, and that will start the process. You can see it down the bottom here, it just takes a while to do. So that's going to chug away there. As you can see, it's quite it's the slowest part of the process, really. And then let that uh, give yourself some time to do that, and then I'll come back when it's near the end, and we'll continue. Okay, once the process is completed, it can take several hours to do, depending on the size of your files. And once you've done that, that's that finished with. And I'm going to just minimise that. So the next thing you want to do is to import your files into your editing program. So, so I've got here some ones I did earlier on. And you can see there, it's taken the three images and it's put into um, using the preset we used, we created there to new individual files. So I'm going to open this up now in my editing program. So you can use various editing programs. Uh, I'm going to use After Effects and um, I'm going to show you Photoshop. You can even uh, import them into Photoshop as well. So I'll just quickly show you Photoshop now and then we'll do um, have a look at After Effects. As I say, you can do the same thing in Premiere Pro, but you need to have them in a JPEG format. So I'm going to just open up Photoshop now. So all you've got to do is go File Open. Yes, this one. And once you click on the first one there, you see it's just going to say image sequence. And I'm going to click on OK. And then immediately you get this thing comes up. Now it'll, I'm going to choose 24 frames. It's 24 frames per second. Click on OK. And look, Photoshop itself can actually process the files. You can see there it does a pretty good job. You can add all the normal effects. So you might want to hear in Photoshop, for example, use uh, some sharpening. I use the unsharp mask there and it's pretty cool so you get everything there you want to do so you can preview it you can change the amount etc all the normal things and you can add music even so which is handy so you can actually add audio for example here have that there 
and then if you just play it you've got so it's pretty good and if you want to then render it you can see there you can do render video and you give it any name you want and select your folder you can use Adobe Media Encoder which is what I'm going to use in Premiere Pro and After Effects anyway or just use a Photoshop image sequence if you want using uh, any of these basically so you could use a a PNG one or a JPEG 2000 or a Photoshop one. I'll use a PNG one there. And you see there you've got the options to do the different formats. So HDTV for example. And that as it is. So it comes 24 frames per second. And that's it. And you can just go ahead and start rendering it. So that's uh, Photoshop. So you can actually use Photoshop to edit your files and or you can actually just use um, After Effects probably the most popular one so if I use Open After Effects now and then I click on there and After Effects you just go to File File Import just Files this one here TIFF Sequence and Thing with After Effects, make sure you generally you want to be forcing the alphabetical order in these to make sure you get them all in, otherwise, it'll just import the individual one file. So, once you're what's in After Effects, you want to change the frame rate to the frame rate you want to have, which I want to have as a uh, 24. So, interpret footage, let's change that to 24. Click on OK, and the other thing you want to change there is the see the 8 bits per channel, well you want to have that 16 bits per channel because you've got really high quality TIFFs there, get the maximum uh, use out of them. So having done that, uh, that's pretty well it and you can then obviously create your composition out of it and from there do all, all your normal effects. So for example you might want to do your uh, sharpening, unsharp mask there as well. That's it. So you can add all your normal effects there, curves, all the rest of it. And then once you've done done whatever you want to do on that, you just go to File and you know export that. Then add to Render Queue. And that's it. So just render it. I'm going to render it normally as an AVI. That's what I do. People do all sorts of things linking it into Premiere, but I just I just find for me I'm old school. I quite like doing that. So I've got an AVI file to work on in you know, the AVI program. So having done that, output it and then just start the render. You can then use it in Premiere Pro or any other program to edit the uh, video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. 